let's just lower this a bit. All right, yeah, we're live. Let me get closer. Hi, Deborah. Right, I think I might have about half an hour, 45 minutes. Of course, I've got a cup of tea. I've got two cups of tea. We're going to make this last. So it's Defending Elvis Presley. Fans want the truth. Welcome to my uh, kitchen today. Earlier on, we were in my lounge. And I'll tell you what. Uh, anyway, if you're new, this is Defending Elvis Presley. Fans want the truth. Um, we can go... As Defending Elvis, we've been going for about four months, but many of you may not know this. We have been, I've been making Elvis videos, mini documentaries, one minute long documentaries, shorts and wides for a couple of years. I've made over 4,000, maybe nearly 5,000, millions and millions of views. Now, I just want to say I'm not boasting about how many views I've had. I'm proud of it, yeah? I'm proud that we defend Elvis. So when I mention the amount of views I've had, it hasn't gone to my head. I'm just proud, that's all. Right, uh, let's have a look here. So let me just... All right, so uh, we did a live stream. Um... We did a live stream today on Priscilla, a Priscilla fan. Hi, Yvette. Yvette, we had a brilliant live today. Did you watch it, Yvette? Hi, Linda. Linda was there. Did, did you watch it? Right, let me quickly tell everyone we're live. Um, so, obviously, I go on to the Defending Elvis Presley Facebook page. Please go to it. Please um, join it. And then there's a chat on the Defending Elvis Presley page you join the chat uh and then we can chat with each other i can inform you when we're live so that's what i'm doing now um let's go into it we're live now um so let's make sure everyone's uh who's on there susie mary let me put it in big capital letters live um, so the Defending Elvis Presley Facebook page, I think it's brilliant, yeah? Still growing, still quite new. Um, I think we're up to like 500 members or something. But the chat is unbelievable. The 24-7 chat is like, whoa, like nonstop, all day, all night. Brilliant topics, obviously Elvis related. Um, you guys are making friends, getting to know each other, posting great videos, great footage, great pictures, great information. Brilliant research, loads of documents, great. Like, I am blown away by the 24-7 Facebook Messenger defending Elvis Presley Facebook page. Okay, guys? Um, right. So, we dedicated um, a live stream to, um, how can I say it? We had a few comments from a Priscilla fan. Now, I've got nothing against Priscilla fan. We're not against Priscilla fans. Priscilla fans are very welcome. I've got nothing against them. I do think that we have to educate them. I mean that with respect. I do think that we have to help them do their research. Elaine, hi Elaine. Hi Stacy. hi Lorna. Now, we are here to change Priscilla fans' minds. We're here for that. We're like, okay, you're a Priscilla fan which to me means you're an Elvis fan. Um, now, how can we change your mind? How can we open your eyes? How can we remove the blinkers so that you... Ha, now, now, how do I say this in a kind way where I'm not being mean or arrogant or bolshy or big-headed, which is hard for me. Yvette knows that. Um, hi, Susan. Now... Now, someone called me a Priscilla fan uh, the other day, I think this morning, yeah? I was never a Priscilla fan. <laughs> I just want whoever said that in their comment, it was one of my subscribers, one of my members, and no problem. Um, hi, Jane. I was never a Priscilla fan, ever. What I was was this. In the 70s and 80s, which to me, you know, especially the 70s, was a, a real big 
part of my getting to know Elvis years, bonding with Elvis, becoming Elvis, gelling my hair, dressing like Elvis, acting like Elvis, moving and being Elvis. Um, part of that, to me, was obviously more in the 80s with this book, but part of the becoming an Elvis fan, Elvis changed my life. It's a long story. I can't tell it you now because that's not what we're here. Yeah, poor Elaine, she's under weather. I had it last week. There's a lot of flu around, bit of COVID around. Uh, we all send Elaine love. We want Elaine to get better. But that hasn't stopped Elaine fighting for us on the YouTube channel because I've been watching Elaine's comments. She might be under the weather, but she's still got lots of fighting spirit. Defending Elvis, the claws are coming out. Elaine, yes. Um, so, part of becoming an Elvis fan, because let's face it, we became Elvis fans. We were influenced. We found a record. We were given a record. We had an album. We had a magazine. We watched him on the films, you know, when they were rerun on TV when we were kids. Some of you that are over 50, that are in your 60s, even 70s, maybe even 80s, remember... Elvis first coming onto TV in the black and white TV sets and, and then just becoming more and more famous, going to the cinema, watching Elvis through the 60s with his many, many different styles of movies. I have my favourites, but I'll be honest with you guys, I love Elvis movies because I get to see Elvis looking fit and young and funny and looking happy, beautifully dressed, beautifully groomed. And uh, my point is this, as we all got to know Elvis, we've all got our own stories, haven't we? How we discovered Elvis, why we love Elvis. Now, to me, many of us fell for the package, the package deal. Now, the package deal was Priscilla and Elvis and Lisa Marie. Do many of us agree there? It didn't, it was never, I don't think many of us, just it was with I almost none of us, I would say, that it was just Elvis. Yeah, it was Elvis and Priscilla. We saw them as a romantic couple. We fell for the story. I would say at first, um, the ages were irrelevant. I think if you grew up in the late 50s and through the 60s, I don't think even their age even came up. So we fell for the romance, the beautiful black and white footage beamed around the world of them together at the marriage, May the 1st, 1967. We all envied, let's face it, we envied Priscilla. I'm on about the women. The men, like me, we all, we all wanted to be like Elvis, act like him, dress like him, do our hair like him, smile like him, talk like him, walk like him. We all had our pictures on our, I did, I Big, giant-sized pictures on my wall in the 70s of Elvis. Beautiful pictures. Um, so we fell for the romance. We fell for the fairy tale. Now, for many, many years, I just thought, oh, that's nice, you know. They're a beautiful couple. El they have a glamorous life. In and we all just thought they all lived in Graceland. How many of us knew that they lived in different homes? I didn't. I always thought Elvis was born in Tupelo, in on Old Satilla Road, in a shotgun house, two-room shotgun house. His, his poor twin um, was stillborn, that he had, that he struggled, really, really, really poor upbringing, and that eventually he moved to Memphis, where he found some records, made a record for his mother, and then became famous. Then, met, then went, uh, how can I just do it, famous for a bit, uh, then is drafted. Well, he, well, he actually signed the draft, didn't he? He's, and goes to the army. His poor mum dies. He meets Priscilla. They fell in love, get married, move to Graceland, have Lisa Marie. Elvis is unfaithful, takes drugs. Elvis dies. That's the end of the fairy tale. That is how the public perceived everything. Yeah, a very quick and everything, everything that went wrong in the relationship between Priscilla and Elvis was Elvis's fault. This is the brainwashing. This is the fake, 
false news. Trump calls it fake news. I call it fake Elvis news. So we all fell for it. Now, then some books started to come out. I remember buying the Michael Edwards book. Um, I think it was called Priscilla and Me. Yeah, it's one of the first books I read. So you didn't. Okay, vet. I don't believe you, but, you know, let's just make sure I haven't missed any messages. Um, right. So let me get to the point. I hope you've got your teas handy because we've got half an hour. Yeah? Look, my wife was bought a cup and I've stole it. I've stole my wife's cup. It's a nice size. You know where you just get that nice size where it's a lot of tea and it's going to last a long time. I like the cup. That's, I don't want one of these that last a minute. I want one of these that last ages. Have you got your cup of tea or coffee? Um protein shake you don't need that if you eat plenty of meat and eggs meat eggs and salt the key to my beautiful health slimming out uh, anyway back to the what i'm saying so we followed the storyline you know um i was when i used to watch elvis and priscilla on tv um for me it was old footage but because i was grew up in the 70s um you know, when I saw the old footage, the black and white footage, the old magazine footage, um, I just fell for the romance. I really did. So this is where I talk about the Priscilla fans. This is where I think we are different than Priscilla fans. Now, I'm not insulting Priscilla fans. So, uh, Janet, is someone talking to Janet? I don't think John, Janet's on it, is she? Um... It, uh, right, we have been doing. <laughs> Elaine knows we've the whole of the last live stream, which was two hours long, was dedicated to Poussin, Kate. I mean, sorry, Lucette, Lucette, who is a subscriber of our channel, who regularly posts comments. She's from France. She does get quite um, passionate. She had a bit of a disagreement with Janet, who is on YouTube. Now, I'm going to be respectful towards Janet. She's entitled to her views. I personally think Janet's a little bit sarcastic, um, talks down a little bit when she um, has her very passionate views. And I'm going to read you her last two comments because I think they're quite interesting. But for, to really put yourselves into context with this video, this part two live stream of the um, Priscilla fan debate. And we, I am an Elvis defender. We, Team Elvis, are Elvis defenders. But someone made a point and they're right. I am defending an Elvis defender. So Pusin, yeah, I think was targeted by a Priscilla fan. I mean that in a nice way. No, I don't mean targeted nastily. I mean his, his comments were singled out. Then he had quite a few quite passionate comments aimed at him. This is Poussin, Lucette. I keep calling it him. It's not him. It's Lucette is a girl, is a woman. Right. Now, Janet, I thought, was quite headstrong, quite passionate. I think the type of comments that she gave, I think were a little bit borderline rude, sarcastic. And so we dedicated the last live stream to Janet and Putin, Lucette. It went on for two hours. The second hour more describes uh, what we were trying to defend Lucette. So remember, I'm an Elvis defender and I've just become a defender of an Elvis defender. So it's a double whammy, isn't it? Defender, defender, Elvis. Yeah. So um, now I just finished off my little story I was trying to say. Why are Priscilla fans so passionate? Now, I just want to reiterate, I'm not against Priscilla fans. I don't hate Priscilla. This is not a hate Priscilla channel. I'm just trying to get to the truth. We're called Defending Elvis Presley. We want the truth. That's all this is. No hate. I'm respectfully defending Lucette. 
who is one of our subscribers, I'm defending her. I personally think Janet has been a bit heavy handed with her comments, quite sarcastic, just my opinion. Um, now I'm going back to again, why do people become Priscilla fans? Because obviously, let's think about it, guys. We're El we are Elvis fans through you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, we've been Elvis fans, 80s, yeah, 90s, whatever it is, all ages. Many of you are over 40, but all ages. Yeah, I'm 57. Um, now, this is what I think. We've, we've fallen for the story. Elvis, um, imagine, imagine I'm a Priscilla fan. Elvis is known that he put on a little bit of weight, not much, had a problem with prescribed medication, People don't really know that he was chronically sick. Most people don't know that Elvis was sick. They think Elvis had become addicted to drugs, that he was a drug addict. That's what most people think. Do we agree with that? Most people think Elvis was binging on cheeseburgers and peanut butter and jelly banana sandwiches. That's, yeah. Most people think he died on the toilet. Most people think that Elvis was obsessed with having sex with lots of different women. This is the general opinion, but he also uh, was very talented, a beautiful voice, a be was a beautiful man, yeah? Many people don't realise that for the last 39 years of Elvis's life, remember he died at 42, for 39 years of his life, he was not bloated. He was not out of it on prescribed medication, yeah? It was only the last two, three years of his life where he looked so unwell, yeah? Now, my point is this. He is perceived and portrayed as a man that the last half of his life he was fat and bloated, on drugs, shagging women, and died on the toilet, binging on cheeseburgers and peanut butter je jelly and banana sandwiches. That's how he's seen I know none of us want to hear it, do we? We don't like to hear it. It's not very nice to hear. But this is the general perception. So the Priscilla fan, in my opinion, thinks Elvis had it great, but Priscilla was the victim. Um, Elvis was uh, unfaithful again and again and again. Poor Priscilla. Then Elvis gets so unwell and fat and dies. Yeah, he's a drug addict. That's how they see it. They don't understand the details of the marriage. They don't understand um, that there's a possibility. They don't understand there's a possibility that they have no idea that it was Priscilla's fault that the divorce happened. They have no idea about the divorce settlement and how cruel it was. They don't really have a good idea about the many things that happened after Elvis died that are very unfair to Elvis. They just believe a shortened version of reality. They believe a rewritten version of history. This is history rewritten, yeah? Even when they read this, it sounds like a beautiful romance. It gives the impression that Elvis was a paedophile. And then it goes on to try and make the, um, the public and the Elvis fans and the Priscilla fans think that Elvis was the bad guy and Priscilla was a victim. That's generally the story. There's many things in this book that really shouldn't have been written by Priscilla, quite cruel, but generally, they met, they had an innocent relationship when she was 14, which is not true. Elvis only knew Priscilla for about 10 weeks. How many of you know that? That Elvis had only known Priscilla for about 10 weeks? I would say most of you don't know that. A couple of months. Then he went back to Germany and got on with his life, making GI Blues, Frank Sinatra special, RCA albums. He was, it was 1960 when he went back after coming out of the army. Yeah. But people, the general public think that Elvis met Priscilla at 14 and stayed with her until she was, at, well, until 1973. You work out the years. So 1959 they met. So that's 14 years. People generally think that Elvis was with Priscilla for 14 years, that they were married for 14 years. People even think 
that Priscilla was living with Elvis at 14. Yeah, seriously. They think Elvis was having sex with a 14-year-old. They think Elvis took advantage of Priscilla. And when she gets interviewed, now this actually does bother me. When she gets interviewed, Priscilla, and they say to her, oh, you met Elvis at 14. She doesn't say, oh, um, oh, we weren't a couple. She doesn't say that. She went, yes, but times were different then. The interviewer already is caught in a lie, caught in a trap, yeah? Now, what she should say is this. The interviewer, who's very naive as well, because I think most of the interviewers around the world have been following this stupid storyline, in my opinion, for entertainment purposes, for 50 years, yeah? Now... The interviewer's there. He's bought into the lies. He believes all this rubbish, crap, whatever you want to call it. Hi, Mrs. Presley, you poor thing. You poor widow. It must have been so hard for you losing Elvis. What was it like losing your husband? So young. He was only 42. Yes, I know. But he had a problem with drugs, you see. And he couldn't be faithful. Yeah, I met him when I was 14. This, um, and then he'll say, oh, yes, he did like to tell me how to dress and do my hair, do my makeup, how to walk, how to act, how to talk. Oh, right. That doesn't sound right. Do you, did you feel stifled? Yeah, I felt like I was in a prison. I felt like there was a war around me. I wanted to find myself. I needed to find myself. Yeah. This is what we all think. I have just told you why Priscilla fans, in my opinion, have been brainwashed. Because I'm not going to do a Shauna voice, Yvette. You do a Shauna voice. Now, this I'm trying to, I know I'm being very long winded, but I'm trying to give you, to tell you why. Priscilla fans have been brainwashed, have been spoon fed into believing the fairy tale that there was this perfect romance that went wrong and it went wrong because of Elvis. So when this is what I'm getting back to the nitty gritty now. So when we try and change a Priscilla fan's mind, we try and reach out to a Priscilla fan. I've got nothing against Priscilla fans. And we try to say, hi, Vicenzo. Hi, Helen. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Diana. Diana, I'm not going to ignore you. Diana, I hope you're having a great day, Diana. Elvis was a good guy. He definitely was. And I'm going to I'm going to make that very clear in this live stream. Francis. Hi, Francis. Hi, Lorna. And uh, of course, we've got Cheeky Yvette and Chilling in Canada. Now, everything I've just said to you is not true. Everything. All the negative stuff I've just said to you about Elvis is not true. Yeah, I'm giving you an example of why Priscilla fans have been brainwashed, misled into thinking that Priscilla was the victim and Elvis was the bad guy. Yeah. So this is the point of the whole of the live stream that we had this morning that was two hours long. But the second one hour of it, we break down every comment that Janet said. No, I'm not I'm not trying to pick on Janet. I'm trying to defend Elvis and get to the truth. I'm trying to make Janet understand she has been brainwashed. She doesn't know the truth. The last comment she said to me. Oh, all right. I'm going to have to go. Oh, let me, let me see. Oh, is that Talia? Yeah. Oh, it's OK. I can stay. <laughs> right. I'm live. I thought that was the kids. When the kids come, I'm going to have to go. I think we've still got 25 minutes. We can stay. We can stay. The last comment I got from Janet was, we all know that Elvis... Now, you listen to this, guys, because you're going to laugh. We all know that Elvis loved... No, I'll say, I'll say it how she said it. I'm going to get it up. Are you ready for this? No, she, she failed with it. <laughs> She failed. Right. So we all know 
Let's see if it comes up. Let's see if it comes up. Um, let's find it. Let's find it. Uh, are we going to get it? Oh, I don't know if I'm going to get it. I might have took a picture of it. Let's have a look. So um, let me read it. Right. So what I'm trying to say to you guys, to cut a long story short, is that I think that the reason Priscilla fans uh, can't budge on their views and won't realise that Elvis was the victim, Elvis was the good guy, is because they've been brainwashed. They've fallen for the, the perfect fairy tale romance. I really believe that, right? So we have been um, discussing... We have been... Let me just shut the door. I'm going to shut this door, yeah? I'm going to finish in 20 minutes. Do, 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 do. Right, we're back. We're back, guys. Right, I'm trying to sort of rush this a bit because I want to get my words out um, before everyone arrives, yeah? Got your cups of tea? So, um, I'm going to read this comment. I think this is the one that where she, she basically says, Elvis um, looked at Priscilla as his wife till his last breath. I repeat, we all know, this is what she said, we all know that Elvis looked upon Priscilla as his last, no, as his wife, till his last breath. Do any of you think, do any of you think that Elvis looked at Priscilla as his wife to his last breath? Please answer that. Because I personally think anyone that thinks that has got to be a bit cuckoo, yeah? Bearing in mind that had a vicious divorce. She was seriously unfaithful. So bearing in mind, in my mind, they split up in 72. Elvis died in 77. So for nearly five years, Elvis went through hell with Priscilla, with financial problems, with arguments over the divorce settlement, with watching Priscilla parade herself around LA, California, with Mike Stone, the karate instructor. So Elvis went through hell. He, Elvis went through hell. And this woman, it doesn't matter if she's woman or male, I'm not being sexist. This um, Janet, yeah, and I wish she would join us so she could comment, um, is basically saying Elvis, to the day he died, looked at Priscilla as his wife. Come on. I don't care. Hi, Elvis and things, reactions. Hi, Mary Campbell. Now, come on. Seriously, even Priscilla fans, no matter what your views are and what my views are on Elvis and Priscilla's marriage, yeah, and divorce and divorce settlement and financial problems, do any of you think that Elvis looked at Priscilla as his wife to his last breath? Come on, seriously. All right, let me just um, read this comment. I'm just going to go back a minute. Uh... Elaine says, Priscilla Bueller presents herself to people as a person that she isn't. She did the same to Elvis in Germany. And has anyone noticed how she changed her voice over the years to a more softer tone to fool others? It's a bit of a Margaret Thatcher thing, isn't it? Do any of you know who Margaret Thatcher was? El uh, Elaine will. She was uh, the British Prime Minister way back, yeah? She had four terms, didn't she? Sometimes I feel sorry for Margaret Thatcher, but she got... She had training and had and altered the tone of her voice to talk like this, yeah? Um, and they say that that training that she had, Margaret Thatcher, the Prime Minister of the UK, won her the election, won her the general election. There's actually a film that shows it, but this is what Elaine's saying about Priscilla. She's changed the tone of her voice to win, to get more approval from the fans. I'm not saying that she's correct, just that's what Elaine's saying. So Vicenzo Elvis is saying he was forced into marrying Priscilla. And do you know what? Many of the, many of the facts and information that we've learned together as Team Elvis do point in that direction. I will say this. 
I won't be so biased and say that Elvis didn't like Priscilla. I actually think Elvis did like Priscilla. I think he was in and out of love with her. I think he was infatuated with her on and off. I also think Priscilla was the same in the early years, yeah, when she was very young. I think she was very infatuated with Elvis. I truly believe that she really did want to marry him. I don't really think Priscilla wanted to have a baby with Elvis once, especially once they were married. I think after Priscilla got married, she didn't want she didn't want to have a baby so soon because she wanted to have fun with Elvis. So uh, which could have to me caused bonding issues between Priscilla and Lisa. I'm just guessing, I'm a fan, it's just an opinion. I don't know. Yeah. Let me read this comment. So I've told Janet I think she's a bit sarcastic, yeah. I've also told her that I think she talks down to people because I didn't like the way she spoke to Lucette, um, which who is Poussin on the YouTube channel. So this is my reply to her. No, no. So I've told I've told her off a little bit. I just said, why are you talking down to people? I've said, um, let's keep things respectful, that kind of stuff. So she replies to me, I am not sarcastic. I don't talk down to people. That's what some people do for money and attention. So she's basically saying to me, I run a YouTube channel for money and attention, which is complete garbage. I don't need money, guys. I do not need money. I run this channel with passion. I love it when you guys become members, but I've set it at the lowest amount, $1. Because I, 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 to me, it's I want to pat on the back and go, I like what you're doing. I want to be a member. When I ask you guys to buy me a coffee, I like it. And I'll tell you why. Because, um, look, how can I explain to you this so you understand why I like you guys buying me a coffee? Um, imagine you take an, exa uh, an exam, yeah? And at the end of the exam, someone marks it for you and they give you a 60%, 70%, 90%. It's important to you how well you do, yeah? a gold star, a silver star, a bronze star. Now, when you guys buy me a coffee, it's like you're giving me a gold star, yeah? It's like you're giving me 90% results on your exam. It's just a way of you guys telling me what I'm doing is good, what I'm doing you enjoy, you appreciate, and you want to say thank you. So when I'm asking you for a coffee, guys, I'm not trying to be gr grabby and grab your money. I'm trying to get you to say thank you to me, but I only want you to say thank you if you like what I'm doing. If you don't like what I'm doing, then don't buy me a coffee. If you like what I'm doing, buy me a coffee, guys. It takes a couple of dollars. This is my point. So she's saying to me, um, she's she's basically saying to me that what I do is for money, and she's very wrong. She doesn't know my story. She doesn't know that Elvis saved my life when I was four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, those years. I don't want to go on about it. I had very traumatic childhood years to do with my father and Elvis took my mind away from it and Elvis completely changed my life and saved me and helped me become the person I became. I had a very successful life uh, after a very difficult childhood and I owe Elvis for that. I owe him everything. So she even said to me, I don't think you're an Elvis fan. Could you imagine anyone telling me I'm not an Elvis fan. Well, I literally live for Elvis. He's like, except for my family and my friends, Elvis is my life. Yeah, I, I know, and many of you feel that way as well. And I'm paying Elvis back. I, I have to repay Elvis because I think I'd be a very different person if I never discovered Elvis. So I owe, I owe Elvis. I have a love for Elvis that I can't even describe in words. And that love overflows to Lisa Marie, to Riley, to the twins, to um, Benjamin, to all of the bloodline of Elvis, because Elvis to me is a, like a best friend and I have to look after his kids, yeah? You get it? His grandkids, they're all within the same realm. So anyone telling me that I'm not an Elvis fan is ridiculous. Anyone telling me I do this for money are in dream world. For the, f uh, for the first two years I ran my Elvis channel, I never got one penny. The money we get from YouTube running these channels is pennies, pennies. So I'm quite insulted that she said that to me, especially for the amount of time that I put into it. I would say I'm putting in six, 
six hours a day at least running this channel. I do it for love. I'm not asking for sympathy. I want to do it. I want to put in six hours a day. I enjoy it. I love it. It distracts me and it gives, it's my way of having fun. Yeah. So she then says, um, I don't talk down to people that that's what some people do for money. She means me and attention. She means me. Um, and others do do it for recreation. I stated my opinion, which is my right, like everyone else. Yes, I agree with that. She's a Priscilla fan. She has the right to have her opinion. But we are a Defending Elvis Presley channel with Team Elvis. Yeah, she has. she's come into our channel. Yeah, Janet has come into our channel. Yeah, you can read the comments yourself. Janet Brown. Uh, on the video that is called um, The Fans Have Been Fooled. The Fans Have Been Fooled. Yeah, look it up. It's a live stream. Yeah, we did it, I think, yesterday or the day before. Um, so she's come onto our channel, Defending Elvis Presley, Fans Want the Truth. And she's disagreeing with our, co with, she's throwing in her comments and saying that we're wrong, that we are bullying. Priscilla, that we are Priscilla haters. This is what she's saying. She's insulting us, putting us down, talking down to us, um, saying that we are just being nasty for the sake of it because we like being nasty. We've got nothing better to do. She even says we don't have a life. Get a life. Yeah. This is what she's saying. So I'm jumping in and I'm disagreeing with her. Yeah. So this, here we go. I have agreed to disagree with them. She's been arguing with, I think, uh, Lucet, I think maybe even Elaine has a few of you, quite a few of you have commented. That video has had a lot of views. It's got a lot of attention. Fans have been fooled. It's got a lot of attention. Uh, about 150 comments. Yeah. I have an exceptional life because I said to her, listen to this, guys. I said to her, well, you're telling Lucet get a life because this is what she basically said. Well, I could say the same to you. I said to her, I could say to you because she said to Lucet, haven't you got better things to do with your life than um, put down Priscilla? Yeah. But I don't think Lucette was putting down Priscilla. I think Lucette was defending Elvis. I see it differently. So she says to Lucette, well, haven't you got better things to do? Yeah. Come on, get a life type comment. So I say in my reply, well, I could say the same thing to you. Why don't you get a life? Because you're on our YouTube channel telling us off for having opinions about Priscilla defending Elvis that's what we're doing in it yeah so you so you get a life so I'm turning it around I'm saying to her well, you if you can say to us get a life we'll say to you get a life because you've obviously got nothing better to do with your time than come onto our channel defending Elvis Presley and try and argue with us that's what she's doing so I have then so she replies I have an exceptional life but I don't find joy in hurting others now, I'm not trying to hurt Priscilla. I'm trying to defend Elvis. You guys, with your comments on our YouTube channel, you're not trying to hurt Priscilla. You're trying to defend Elvis. You're trying to get the truth out there. Now, the truth may hurt. I, I accept that. If Priscilla sees us bringing up all of her wrongdoing, breaking down the facts, exposing the lies, the mistakes, the wrong behavior, the mistreatment of Elvis, it's going to hurt Priscilla's feelings. Of course it is. But the truth does hurt. The truth does hurt. It's impossible for us to defend Elvis if we can't expose the wrongdoing to Elvis. Expose the fake book, in my opinion, for entertainment purposes. Expose the rewriting of history. Remember, this book was written seven years after Elvis died from Priscilla's point of view by Priscilla. And all of this book, we can say, could be lies, in our opinion could be lies. Maybe every single thing in this book is a lie. We don't know, do we? We weren't there. But it's possible because Elvis had no input in this book. He was dead. He'd been dead seven years. The book was written by a divorcee that was seriously unfaithful, that, in our opinion, robbed him of his money with a disgustingly nasty divorce settlement. And all the documents are out there. If you want to look up the divorce settlement and see just how nasty it got, 
even with the deed of charge created, the, the lien, the charge that was placed on Graceland, you will see this was a very nasty divorce. So when we're exposing the truth, even the way that Priscilla was unfaithful with Mike Stone, Steve Pat, and the way she conducted herself after Elvis died with many interviews making Elvis look bad, you will clearly see that the way she treated Elvis was very cruel. Now, I'm not saying Elvis is an angel. He did do things wrong to Priscilla. He did. He was unfaithful. I know some of you try and say he wasn't unfaithful. Of course he was. Yeah. The other thing that she's given the impression, Priscilla, is that he was a drug addict. Let me let the dog in. He's banging on the door. Right, dog, come on. What's going on, man? Let me just warm the tea. Right, what's the matter? What's the matter with you, eh? You. Woo. Right, just give this 20 seconds. Let's have a look. How long have we got? Ooh. I think we've got about 15 minutes, so I need to speed up, guys. Okay, let's get some. Okay, we got the tea, we got the tea. Right, I'm just, I'm trying to rush through this because I know that my kids and my wife and the grandmother are going to be here very soon and they are not going to let me speak to you guys. What car is it? No, we have to try. We've got a few more minutes. Let me quickly read through the comment. Um, right. I wouldn't do that. Right. Here we go. I have exceptional life. I don't find joy in hurting others. Well, I'll tell you now, the, the, the things that Janet said to, to Lucette were hurtful um, and argumentative. Um, I wouldn't do that for any amount of money. I know you're doing it for free. You're being rude for free. I wouldn't do that very much. Your last comment makes no sense. I'm not sure what she meant. And then it says, she, um, right, here we go. Your last comment makes no sense at all, Louis. Reread it and rewrite it so I can understand it, please. I think she's just being rude, isn't she? Yeah. It was in reference to Priscilla Presley, the woman Elvis considered his wife until he took his last breath. Right, come on, guys. I'm going to see your comments to this. I want to read that bit. I'm going to scroll past all your COVID comments, unfortunately. Now, I'll say it again. Now, this gets me, guys. This really gets me, yeah? Um, let's have a look. I wouldn't do that for any amount of money. Your last comment makes no sense at all, Louis. Now, here we are. Reread it and rewrite so I can understand it, please. Right. Actually, she's still commenting now. I'm going to read it to you, right? Um, unless that's Elaine commenting. She's replying to Elaine, I think. Um, Your last comment makes no sense at all, Louis. Reread it and rewrite it so I can understand it, please. It was reference to Priscilla Presley. The woman Elvis considered his wife until he took his last breath. I repeat it. The woman Elvis considered his last wife until he took his last breath. Come on, guys. I know I did this 10 minutes ago. Come on. Now, is that ridiculous or not? Does anyone here actually believe that Elvis considered Priscilla his wife until his last breath, bearing in mind the different relationships Elvis had and how hurtful and cruel that she was to him and the way that financially she screwed him over. Yeah? Come on. No way. Yeah, no way, Lorna. Come on. If it's considered his wife until the end, then why would he have her girlfriends in the audience together and introduce them as girlfriends? Yeah, and I've, I've watched that, Colleen. He was done with her, definitely. Now, do I think Elvis was went through periods of heartbreak because of Priscilla? I think, yeah. I think when you lose a wife, the mother of your child, you have those days, come on, you have the days where you have regret. We know about that. Elvis was a good guy. He would take blame for everything. He was so kind. He would forgive anyone, wouldn't he? Elvis forgave everyone. Even if you listen to that last conversation with Red West, 
he forgave him. Yeah. And I believe <coughs> I, 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 shh, 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 I, 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 oh, okay. Who is that? It's alright, it's my son. Be quiet on the dog a minute. One second. My son is home. Come on, what's the matter? Come say hello. Come say hello. Look, come say hello. There we go. See, can't. It's only Rio. It's only my son. Right, you can relax now. Okay. Oh, 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 no. Oh, 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 oh. We're at home in my kitchen. <laughs> so, when they know, you've said to stop now. You have to learn to speak English. You speak it in English? Right, good girl. Good girl, that's it, that's it. She's being... <laughs> yeah, you can sit here if you want. Come and sit with me. Come and sit with me. Right, look over here, say hello. There we are, look, you want to say hello? Come on, up, 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 up. All right, I think I'm quite... I'm starting... It's working, guys. It's okay. It's okay. Yubba, 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 yubba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, you happy now? Yes? It's wiggling your tail? That's Ella, by the way. She's 11. Woo, woo, um, woo. Right. So, um, let's have a look. Uh, I don't take offence of being called a witch. I live in Salem. The David Soul film. Salem's Lot. The David Soul film. Do you know it? Do you, Valvis, do you know it? Um, woo, woo. Anyway, so... The general, let me just spring to the end of the comment. I'm not trying to create hate for Janet. I want Janet to know, if you're going to defend Priscilla and you're going to come onto our channel and you're going to have a debate with one of our subscribers, you better know what you're talking about. You better have done your research. Because if you ain't done your research and you can't see Priscilla's wrongdoing to Elvis, then you shouldn't have joined our channel. You shouldn't have come onto a channel called defending Elvis, because that's why we're here. We're defending Elvis, not because we're trying to make money, not because we're haters or nasty. We're defending Elvis because we're trying to get to the truth so we can clear Elvis's reputation and image, preserve his legacy. So Janet, please do some more research. Now I'll just carry on reading. Um, at the end of the day, we all agree, well, most NA, some are just along to, for the rides to put others down. We're not trying to put you down, Janet. We're trying to defend Elvis. We're disagreeing with your comments that you've thrown at us. We're actually being defensive. We're defending your against your comments. I would say you're putting us down, yeah? Because we haven't come to you. We haven't come to you and started um, saying stuff to you. You've come to our channel, our space, yeah? Um, and then this is when she says, some are just doing along for the ride to put others down. In reality, not a fan of Elvis at all. That's me. I am not a fan of Elvis at all. Now, remember, nearly 5,000 videos about Elvis. Hundreds of live streams now. We've done a lot of live streams defending Elvis. The name of my channel is Defending Elvis Presley Fans Want the Truth. And she's telling me I'm not a fan of Elvis. And then she ends it by saying Elvis is the greatest entertainer God ever created. Okay. Fair enough. We'll defend him then. This is my thing to Janet. If you think so highly of Elvis... Why are you defending the wife that has portrayed him in a terrible light for over 40 years? This is what I say to Janet. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that Priscilla also praises Elvis. I've seen the hundreds of interviews where she says 20 good things about him and three bad things about him. But it's not good enough. I've, there are good things in this book where she says good things about Elvis. But what about all the bad stuff? You can't do it. You can't in one breath, say how great Elvis is, but then make him out to be a paedophile or a rapist or um, a drug addict, yeah? Because then you're not the Elvis fan. So I put it to 
Janet, that she's not the Elvis fan. Because if she truly was an Elvis fan, she would defend him. She would make time to do research to understand the truth. She'd work out and find out what the wrongdoing of Priscilla was. She'd find the divorce documents that show how cruel Priscilla was and what year it happened. The last year of his life, this was all going on, the divorce. A very, very nasty divorce happening in 1977, the year he died. We know that that year the book came out as well, the tell-all book by the Memphis Mafia, which was disgraceful and a betrayal book. And at the same time, he was chronically sick, chronically sick. So he needed a lot of medication just to get through the day. He was in a lot of pain and discomfort. Just to get through the day, he needed a serious amount of medication. Now, don't forget, Elvis is blamed for the breakup of Priscilla and Elvis. How many people talk about the unfaithfulness? When is the unfaithfulness ever spoken about? When you see Priscilla get an interview again and again and again, the latest one with Pierce Morgan, did she mention that she was unfaithful to him three months after Lisa Marie was born? Did she mention that a couple of years after that, she ran off with Mike Stone, the karate instructor, who was an acquaintance of Elvis's, and then paraded him in public in California and took his daughter? Did she mention she broke up two families, that Mike Stone's wife, Frances Stone, was pregnant with a small girl? Two kids. Did she mention any of that? When she sits there and is being interviewed, Elvis is the love of my life. I still love him. Oh, he was so amazing. He was so beautiful, so handsome, so funny. I love being with him. I love being at Graceland. We used to eat together and go on trips together. And he took me here. Does she ever mention all the wrongdoing that she did towards Elvis? That she he was portrayed in such a negative light. If you go back to the interviews in the, uh, in the 80s, guys, you will be quite shocked with some of the things she said. The Barbara Walter interviews always comes to mind, but there's others. Questions are asked, quite nasty questions, quite cruel questions towards Elvis that make Elvis look bad. She doesn't brush over them and ignore them. She agrees. She doesn't stand up for Elvis. She doesn't disagree with the questioning of the interviewer. She says, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. All oh, right, you met him at 14, with, did you? Yeah. Oh, you were together 14 years? Yeah. Were you 15 when you moved to Graceland? Yeah, about 15. She was nearly 18. Yeah, she married him at 22. Do you get what I'm saying, guys? Never a mention of the unfaithfulness during the marriage. Remember, they got engaged, I think, December 66, married 1st of um, July 67 by March of 68, two ish months after Lisa Marie was born. God rest her soul. She's unfaithful with the dance instructor that Elvis had paid to give her dance lessons. Then they have a fake marriage for two years, and then she runs off with Mike Stone, has a secret affair with him for a year, and then takes Lisa Marie and off she goes with loads of money. Then there's this brutal, horrific. Divorce settlement. Two of them. The first one wasn't too bad. The second one was, was disgusting. So, and then we have Priscilla fans who refuse, refuse to accept that Elvis may have been a victim, that Priscilla, there was wrongdoing on Priscilla's part. You try and change a Priscilla fan's mind and they'll call you a hater. They will call you a hater. Right, I'm just going to see this a minute. There's a few responses from, from. well, I can see one response from Janet. Look, I haven't read this yet. Let's just see what she says. Thousands of people use the name Elvis to fund their lifestyles. Again, this is just, oh, you want money. If you will, but it doesn't make it my business. No one has ever walked in Priscilla Presley's shoes and no one ever will. She's almost 78. Well, she's 80. You must have really done your research, Janet. You don't even know her age. Maybe it has some dementia. That's just an excuse. You watch 
Priscilla being interviewed. There's no way she has dementia. Have you guys, seriously, have any of you watched Priscilla get interviewed? There is no dementia in that woman. However, when it comes to asking who was the woman Elvis married and gave him a family, only one, there's only one Priscilla can stand up and say, I did. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? Elvis, Elvis, right, did you hear that, guys? Elvis fulfilled his promise to Priscilla's father. One day I'll marry Priscilla. I do believe he was under pressure from different sources, Colonel Tom Parker, the father, and other things. Yeah? So Elvis fulfills his promise. Okay, then, let's get married. We know Elvis didn't really want to get married. There's enough evidence now to show that Elvis didn't really want to get married, but he wanted to do the right thing. He had a good upbringing. He was a Christian man. He was brought up well. And it, when it comes to the crunch, he never had he's never had sex with Priscilla. Remember that. And when it comes to the crunch, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to marry her. Even knowing that he was crying because he didn't really want to get married. But he, he did the right thing. He slowed his life down. He calmed himself down. They have the marriage. We know about Frank Sinatra helping them, taking them on, loaning his aeroplane and then at the Aladdin. They have this ceremony. I think there was a few after parties as well. It wasn't just a quick eight minute ceremony that everyone keeps saying. It's more, it was much more than that. Beautiful marriage. The footage is beautiful. Beamed around the world. Yeah. Elvis does the right thing. Marries Priscilla. Nine months later, she has the baby. Elvis, yes, he was making movies, but he still, as quick, as often as he could, I've read this, would rush back to be with Priscilla through the pregnancy. They have the beautiful baby on the steps of the hospital, beamed around the world, amazing pictures and footage, Elvis holding the baby with Priscilla, of course. A very proud Elvis who loved being a father. Yeah, so Elvis has done the right thing. He's fulfilled his promise. I accept that through the 60s, he acted like a single man, which must have been difficult for Priscilla. I accept that. So Elvis has finally done the right thing. Priscilla has married Elvis. Her dream has come true. And her thanks was 10 weeks-ish after Lisa Marie was born, just after the whole world had watched Elvis get married and watched Elvis proudly holding Lisa Marie, Within weeks, Priscilla has been unfaithful to Steve Peck, the dance instructor, the guy who owned the dance studio. Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense? And then Janet, the Priscilla fan, has the gall to say, however, when it comes to asking who was the one woman Elvis married, gave him a family, Priscilla. Yeah, you get it? Now, what does that mean? Is she trying to say, because Elvis tried to do the right thing, which is why he married her at the end of the day, because Elvis, um, many dispute if he was even in love. I don't know. I would say that he was more a man of his word, which is why he got married. I would say that. Was he in love? I don't know. I don't know. Probably on and off. But I know he was in love with Lisa Marie Presley. I know that she was the most important thing in his life ever, yeah? My point is this. Yeah, Elvis, she is the only woman that could ever say that she married Elvis. But the marriage, if you break down the months, the marriage only lasted a year. Now, many of you say it lasted four or five years. No. Some people say it lasted 14 years. No. Because they married on the first... You work out the time scale, guys. They married on the first of July 1967, by February 68, the baby's born, by March, April, yeah? March, April, she's been unfaithful. There was no marriage, not even a year, not even a year. Then in 1968, Elvis tries to put on a front. There's a fake marriage. They do carry on with their lives. They have holidays, they have a, a second honeymoon. They, they visit Muhammad Ali and visit Tom Jones. They go to a few award ceremonies. They have some day trips together and stuff. But the truth is, the marriage is over. There's no love there. Elvis doesn't want to have sex with Priscilla because 
Um, she's been unfaithful to him. This lie that is said that he won't sleep with a married woman is ridiculous because the next woman that Elvis started dating, Susan Henning, had had a child. So anyone that says Elvis won't sleep with a woman that's had a baby, it is bullshit. I have no idea who started that rumour. It's bullshit. Yeah? So their marriage is over in 68. So come on. They weren't really married even for a year. Not really. Yeah? I agree that when she first moved to Graceland around the end of 62, Priscilla probably wanted him to be faithful between 62 and 66, but it was never going to happen. She married a rock star that was in his 20s that wasn't ready to settle down. No way was Elvis going to be faithful. She knew what she was getting into. It must have been cruel and tight for her. Quite difficult to watch the man that she was infatuated with go off and making his movies and almost definitely seeing different co-stars. I, I have to give Priscilla that. But once she committed to the engagement... And the, she got, she became pregnant and the birth of Lisa Marie, he was good. He was faithful. He was loyal. It was after she was unfaithful to Steve Peck that Elvis then went on to have relationships. We know about Susan Henning in the Love a Little, Live a Little film. And in the 68 comeback, she was there. A beautiful girl, Susan Henning. I think she played a topless barmaid, a top, topless um, mermaid. You can, you can watch Susan Henning's interviews now. You can see all the footage, how they were flirting with each other on YouTube. She's a very, I think she's a lovely person. You listen to Susan Henning. She comes across uh, always speaks highly of Elvis. So, obviously, it's a complicated situation because Elvis was married when they were seeing each other. So, seeing another man, another man's, another woman's, husband is complicated but i think elvis was probably saying to these people that the marriage was over because of priscilla's unfaithfulness yeah so you get what i'm saying now i could spend half an hour um going through all of janet's uh comments i'm not going to do that i don't want to just sit here and be nasty to janet you can go and see the comments for yourselves guys um, but I will say this, I think Janet's comments, um, the best advice I can give to Janet is do some more research. Um, we will help you do your research. We will team Elvis. We're here to try and convince the Priscilla fans that they may need to relook at this story. We tell the Priscilla fans that the Sophia Coppola's film based on this book, is a pack of lies, in our opinion. A pack of lies. For entertainment purposes, it is a pack of lies. There is no fairy tale. The fairy tale that you have been spoon-fed for 40-plus years is not true. There's lots of proof now, lots of proof, that show that there is a completely alternate reality to what you have been spoon-fed for 40 years and that many of the things in this book never happened. This book was written by one person to make money, to convince the public that she was a victim and that Elvis was the bad guy. It's the truth, guys. Thanks, Linda. So, anyway, should we read some of your comments before my wife turns up? I, I repeat, there is no hate here. No hate. We are defending Elvis Presley together. Team Elvis, I'm just in my kitchen. I'm no expert. I'm not a researcher. I don't um, ever profess to be this person that knows it all about Elvis. I don't. I get a lot of my facts wrong, my dates wrong. I'm just a fan. I'm just a fan. We are just fans that love Elvis, that want to defend Elvis, want to clear his name, clear his reputation, his image, and protect his legacy. And we are there for the whole bloodline, the whole Elvis bloodline, all of them. Right. Let's read some of these comments. I've caught, oh my God, I reckon I've waffled for an hour. Sorry, guys. <laughs> how can someone talk for an hour? How? How does someone talk for an hour? Guys, how do I do it? Um, Unbelievable. Right. 
So Nicola is missing a good topic today. Uh, oh, yeah, thanks for saying so. She'll watch it. She, Nicola will watch it. She wouldn't do the interviews, would she? Linda, she must have prior info on what they're going to say. That's Sherry. Right, so you guys have spoken about Linda. Right, photos of weddings were very nice. So this is Satnin, Satnin. But no way was it a fairy tale wedding ex ex extravagant you would expect from Elvis's marriage. And I've heard this a few times. Many of you think the wedding should have been bigger than it was. But I do think there was a few quite big receptions held after that, um, the after the what happened at the Aladdin. I think there was a couple of things they did. I think there was quite a big thing held at Graceland. Am I wrong? Tell me, guys. I agree that their marriage could never have worked. Elvis wasn't ready to marry. He wasn't ready to settle down. I re I agree with that. I agree with that as well, that Elvis really deep down wanted to get married in a church. He did. He was a Christian man. So, um, Helen, Elvis had no choice marrying Priscilla. There would have been consequences. I've heard about this, and they, I know about the Jerry Lee Lewis and all that, that he married his first cousin and she was only 13, but it's different than that. Priscilla, Elvis didn't get with a 14-year-old. Elvis married a 22-year-old, nearly 22. Elvis didn't sleep with Priscilla until she was nearly 22. But I understand, I know your point, Helen. Um... Let's just scroll through some of these. Oh, we've caught that. Was... At least you're not talking to yourself. Yeah, true. Yeah, and I don't feel like I am. I feel like I'm talking to you guys big time. Don't forget, I know all of you. Um, let's have a look. I don't think uh, he looks happy. Let's have a look. Who are we talking about? Right. So anyway, I think we've come to an end of it. So what I'm trying to say, I'm, let's remember, the topic really is Priscilla fans. I Remember, I, I repeat, we have nothing against Priscilla fans. You're welcome to join us and join our movement to defend Elvis Presley fans and get to the truth. You're welcome to join us. Um, but I do think, and I say this with respect, if you're a Priscilla fan and you want to join our movement, defending Elvis Presley fans want the truth, you have to remove this. Oh, that's nice, um, Yvette. Tell your husband thank you. If you're, um, if you want to join us and defend Elvis Presley truthfully, I mean, look at the facts, break down the facts, do your research, find your documents. You have to do this because as long as you've got blinkers on and you're caught up in a, Elvis would say, caught in a trap, yeah. As long as you're like that and, you won't, and you're not allowing yourself to see the truth because you believe in this fairy tale that never really happened. It, it just didn't work out, guys. Now, Janet says that, oh, she was the only woman that Elvis married. That doesn't mean nothing. It doesn't mean nothing. He made a mistake. It went wrong. He made a mistake. It went wrong. He chose the wrong woman. The fact that she happened to marry him and they had this one year ish marriage because guys by the end of 71 she was gone running down the road skipping down the road with mike stone with bags of money like that yeah holding lisa marie's hand so it means nothing if their marriage was ended by 72 she was demanding a divorce i think elvis filed the divorce out, out of pride that they were over yeah so Caught in a trap. I can't walk out. We're going to have to play it, guys. This is going to be my, um, my, my, we got to go song. Let's find it. Should we play some music? We haven't played any music, really, have we, guys? So thanks, guys. You know, I love you all. We've had a good hour. Let's find it. Let's see if we can get a good video of it, yeah? Let's have a look. All right. Are we ready, guys? 
let's see how it's looking his best. And thank you, everyone. Do you know what? Guess what I'm going to say to you guys. If you want to buy me a coffee, hit the buy me a coffee button. Please subscribe. Please become a member. It's just a dollar a month. And yes, Janet, it's okay if someone buys me a coffee. <laughs> Doesn't mean that uh, I'm, I don't love Elvis. Right. Are we ready, guys? I love to all of you. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Yeah. So I've really enjoyed this live. It always goes too fast. Like that. Boom. Gone. Where did the time go? So all of you mean the world to me. And here we go.